All right. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Marley's Corner. Coming to you live from the Paw.com offices. My name is David Guinness, founder and CEO here at Paw.com. And of course, this is our beloved Marley, my dog and our chief product tester. Um, coming to you live from her favorite spot in the office, which we've coined Marley's Corner, where we come to you guys every Friday at noon to discuss everything pets. And we have wonderful guests in the, in the pet world that, that we bring to you with uh, awesome information. And this week is no different. We have a, a really cool guest. If you guys tune in weekly, uh, we had a, another similar guest a couple weeks back. But this week we have Officer Philip Ritchie and his canine Raider. So Raider is uh, on the force. She's been on the force since 2017. She's a miniature. It's a black lab, right? Yeah, miniature black lab. Jeff and I were talking. We didn't even know that miniature black labs exist. No. But hopefully we get to meet Raider and uh, talk all about uh, her daily duties and, and her life with uh, Philip and uh, get into what they do and how they help their community. So as usual, please leave a comment or question below. We give out a $50 gift card every week and that's your chance to enter by leaving a comment or a question. So let's see if we can get Officer Philip and Raider. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, good girl. Oh, she slopped all over me. Hello. What's going on? Hey, Officer Philip. How you doing? Good. How are you? We are get... doing well, thank you. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time to chat with us. Looks like you're you're on duty as we speak. Uh, well, we're working like a, it's actually an off day. Um, and we just okay location here. They just want a, a patrol car out front, so it's a pretty pretty easy gig. So not on awesome, a awesome. time per se, but uh, but I got my girl. She's back here sleeping uh, as <laughs> typical lab fashion. Cute man. Well, uh, regardless, uh, we appreciate both of you taking time to come chat with us and. For those watching, maybe you can just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Raider. That would be great. Yeah, let me get her up here. Raider, can you come here? Hey, come here. Raider. Sometimes she has to be lured by treats because she's such uh -oh. a deep a treat. Here. Raider, come on. There you go. Why are you being so shy? Uh, uh -huh. so, Raider, she is uh, your typical black Labrador retriever. Um, she was just... <laughs> A little vocal. She was the runt of the year. Uh, that's why she's so so petite. Sorry, my camera. I'm trying to get the camera where you can see us and uh, hear us. But um, yeah. So your question was, how did I get in law enforcement, or just tell yeah, it, yeah. Tell so a little bit uh, about yourself, and and you know, how'd you get into law enforcement, and and how'd you meet Raider? That would be great. Yeah, so I'm, I'm originally from Florida, and uh, hi, baby. I got into law enforcement. Uh, my uncles were police officers down in Jacksonville, and just uh, listening to their cool police stories as a kid, I was like, that's pretty cool. And uh, I really looked up to my uncle, and uh, so I wanted to be just like my uncle. And so that's how I got into it. And um, I uh, went to school, then uh, got a, a job in a smaller town in South Georgia, um, and worked there for a very short period of time and then moved up to the Alpharetta, Georgia area where uh, we had relocated. My parents had relocated to Georgia um, when um, I was probably about 10-ish, 12, around that range. And um, anyway, moved back to get closer to my parents in Alpharetta. And I've been up here for like 15 years. It's crazy. And the way Raider came about was... Um, you know, I started on patrol, then worked in the traffic unit, and then uh, moved over to community relations and did that for quite some time and saw that um, people really gravitated towards towards dogs. And I saw that through our established canine unit. Um, we have four. We've always had four, four dogs. 
And um, I, I just saw the conversations that the dogs would create and the interactions that um, they created with a, a uniformed police officer. And I thought, how cool would it be to have a dog in the community relations unit whose sole purpose was to get people to talk to us and in a positive way, because typically when people are speaking to a police officer, it may not be in their best, uh, the best time, you know, they're in trouble, they're getting a ticket. And so I wanted people to, to have positive, um, self-initiated conversations with police. So I proposed a position to have a community relations dog and uh, they loved it. And so that's how Raider was, uh, was created and um, I don't know if you guys follow Canine Mattis and Mark. You know yeah, that? actually, um, he was on our show. Um, it might must have been like maybe five, six weeks back, but um, yeah, we, we loved his story as well. Yeah, so um, he actually he picked Raider. He uh, he was on our canine unit. Uh, he was the supervisor over the canine unit, and when I you know had this position get approved. Um, I told him what the position entailed and he said, well, we need to find a happy social driven dog. Cause at first, you know, I wanted to get something, something more approachable to the general public or some not general public, but maybe somebody who um, may have a fear over dogs. Right. And, um, and so I was like, yeah, maybe like a Springer Spaniel or like a, a German short hair pointer or a very vocal lab. And he said, you know, at the end of the day, we need this dog to um, to find drugs um, and also be approachable. So we have to find the dog with the drive. So it's going to be a happy social driven dog. And he said, so whatever dog that is, is what you'll get. And I was like, hey, I'm fine with that, you know. And anyway, he found Raider and uh, here she is. And the rest is history, hey? Well, it yeah. looks like you guys have uh, a really strong relationship. You I can see from the licks how much Raider uh, loves being with you and, and on the job. So how, what does a typical day uh, look like for you guys? How does that play out? Um, so now that's changed a little bit because, you know, in this job, you know, our, our responsibilities and roles and needs change based on the climate and, you know, COVID, things like that. So for, for a long time, you know, our community relations skills were there, but the needs, you know, we couldn't do any of those things. There was no crowds and schools were out. So we actually um, moved over into like a narcotics role uh, with a, a narcotics unit. And then um, we've pretty short staff, we moved over to patrol. So right now, like our typical day, we're a patrol team. And, you know, we could be doing anything from answering vehicle accidents to, you know, burglaries and things like that. Uh, but really our main role is to stay visible and stay available for when officers need Raider. You know, whether they need Raider to locate a missing person, whether they need Raider to locate a, a fugitive that has, you know, escaped or has, uh, you know, fled the rest, um, or because an officer needs her nose uh, on a traffic stop. Um, so we kind of are just all over the place. We're like a utility player. Um, we still do a lot of community relations, you know, Raider and especially Mattis, you know, they've established such a, a role and, and they're well known in the community. So, you know, we, we love to walk around and interact with the community. And, you know, it's, I feel like if I get busy at work or I don't get uh, in our downtown area on like a foot patrol or something, people are like, where are you at? We need to see Raider. Um, so that's kind of like what our, our day is. A lot of training too. Uh, a lot of tracking training and narcotics detection training because right. you're, you're as good as you train. And, and it's just like any kind of sport and athlete. The more you practice, the better you're going to be at it. And, you know, when it comes to Fourth Amendment rights, uh, that's something that's, you know, such a huge um, right that, you know, we have as a citizen in this country. And we want to make sure that we're not violating that. So that's why it's important for me to make sure that she's on top of her game. Um, so yeah, a lot of training. Yeah. And speaking of training, so moving from uh, like a community engagement dog to more like narcotics, was there a, 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 a training period there, or was she trained before in those things when she started with the with the force? Um, so we initially just trained her on narcotics, um, 
and she, you know she she got she was really good at that. She learned that in like five weeks. And um, something when Raider came to us, she she's a little timid actually. Believe it or not, I I, I think I do a good job of showing her this happy social dog, and she is. Um, but she doesn't like you know large crowds and stuff like that uh, unless she's working. When her hunt drive kicks in, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. What, yeah, she's going to go do her job, you know. So, like, for example, you know, we have large festivals um, that or concert venues that will have, you know, rock music and 15,000 people. Uh, I like that environment. She's not right. happy if we're going for a Sunday stroll through the amphitheater while, uh, you know, Seven Dust or Godsmack are playing. She's just not her thing loud, and she, she's scared of, you know, the, the crowd. Uh, but I can bring her in that same exact environment when I give her her command to go find drugs and completely different dog. She's pulled into the venue and she's like, let's go do this. We're going to go rock this. Um, so it's just, you know, I'm always keeping her busy and wanting her to stay on task to kind of distract her from those things and, and make her have fun. So, you know, we also trained her to become a tracking dog that came after her initial certification as a, a drug or a narcotics dog. And that was just, I wanted to give her another, um, another tool on her belt. And uh, she loves it. She's a great tracking dog. She's a great drug dog. And she gets so excited to work. She gets so excited to do a narcotics search. But when we taught her tracking, I almost feel like she gets more excited to do that. She goes crazy if I ask her um, if she wants to T-R-A-C-K. I got a spell set. Yeah, yeah. It's, almost, it's almost like you're, you're tapping into their natural kind of instincts, right? And, and that comes to them so organically that, you know, maybe it, it doesn't happen as often as, as their, their, their natural instincts want to track. So um, when, you, when you do say, say T-R-A-C-K, um, it all bursts out and, of excitement, right? Oh, yeah, because she, she knows it's time. I mean, she even knows, like, dogs are so intelli uh, intelligent. And, you know, they're associative learners, too. So it's like, you know, I tell people, you know, like there's a guy named Mike Ritland. He's big in the dog world. And, you know, I learned this from him. But it's like, you know, if you have a dog and they love to go on walks and you go and grab the leash, you don't even have to say you want to go on the walk. They see you go and grab the leash. And they know what's about to happen. And they go crazy. And people are like, I don't know how to get my dog to calm down. All right, we'll go grab the leash and just go sit down and continue your day. And eventually the dog's like, oh, well, the leash doesn't mean anything anymore. But she's so smart. Like, if I go open my back uh, little drawer in the storage area of the truck, that's where her, uh, her tracking lead is. And she hears me opening that. She, she already knows. Yeah. We're going, we're going to go find somebody. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, do, you, do you have uh, any story that stands out with you and Raider, the craziest thing that's ever happened while she's been working? Any, any standout story that you'd want to share? Yeah, you know, so we're pretty fortunate. And, you know, for the longest time, we weren't in those crazy environments um, with Raider. You know, you know, we don't have the cool Mattis stories of, you know, going after the bad guys and, you know, jumping off cliffs. And, and that's some pretty heroic stuff that Mattis has done. Um, but, yeah, we have some – I think it's really cool stuff. I mean, I got a couple things, you know, like we had a missing uh, person with a, a, a mental disability, mental handicapped, and um, they wandered off. And they um, were missing for quite some time. So we couldn't use Raider's nose, really, to conduct a track – her ears kind of perked up. Oh, she's looking at Oh, uh, yeah, you said the T word. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so there was no starting point really to, to do that. So we were just canvassing the area. But uh, we were able to locate this individual. And he um, he was verbal, but he he did not like the police. He did not want to uh, talk to the police or nothing. He didn't want to go with his mom. And so... You know, I'm sure he's, you know, we didn't want to lose him again because he was an at risk, you know, subject. Um, and so anyway, I just was like, hey, man, do you like dogs? I have a, a police dog. and You want to pet my dog? 
and the whole demeanor with this person changed. And so, you know, then we started talking about Raider and he calmed down and we went and sat on a bench. I was like, hey man, if you sit here, I'll go get you some water and I'll go get Raider. And so I went and got Raider and um, he probably was petting Raider and we were talking about Raider for an hour um, in this field where we had located him. And um, anyway, you know, that was to me really cool because, you know, we didn't use Raider's nose essentially. Uh, we, we used her heart, right? Wow, and, uh, yeah. We were able to get this person um, back to his mom. Um, and I, I really, and I was telling, I mean, because there was at one point he picked up this large stick and was like swinging it at us. And I, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I, there's no way I'm going to use any kind of force on a, a person. Right. This course, happen, yeah. right? uh, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to take one. It wasn't a crazy big stick, but um, I was like, I'm not going to do that. And so, but I, I, if we didn't have radar, I, I don't know how the ending of this would have went. It wouldn't went as smooth as right. it. And uh, anyway, uh, a radar T-shirt, and um, so that was pretty cool. And you know, all the things you know that she does with her nose. I mean, I just think it's incredible what dogs can do and how they can use their nose to find things. You know, we were doing a search warrant uh, a couple years ago, and it was in a like a hotel apartment area on a suspected uh, drug dealer and she alerted on several places and it was really cool because I told the guys after the search, I was like, check there, check there, check here. And everywhere I told them to check, they found things that Raider uh, was trained to locate. And then like towards the end, there was a little coffee cup sitting on this like air conditioner thing. And she was going crazy showing all these behavior changes and was alerting to this coffee cup that had highlighters, like a, like you would highlight, uh, you know, words on a book with. And I was like, there's nothing here. Like, what is she doing? Is there something in the air conditioning? Maybe it's pulling the air out. Because sometimes you you have to deal with the way airflow is. And it could be on one side of the room. But if the odor's pulling in a corner, that's where the dog's going to alert. Right. Anyway, come to find out, I started looking at these highlighters. And this individual had actually took had, had taken out the actual ink, the highlighter, because highlighters are a little thick. Yeah. And transporting his drugs that's how he he would put his little drugs and little dime bags in his highlighter so that way you know on a normal traffic stop you know probably a lot of officers wouldn't suspect that someone had drugs in a highlighter pen and so there was a lot of drugs hidden in all these little highlighter pens so I, that was just amazing and i don't think there's no way that anybody would have taken apart those highlighter pens yeah yeah wow that's incredible that's awesome that's awesome um, Jeff, we got any questions from the audience for us? Yeah, we got a few, a few questions and lots of just, you know, positive comments and people thanking you and Raider for your service and everything you do for the community. Um, a couple of people asked if Raider lives with you full time. She does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and where, where does she sleep? So we have a, a kennel at home. Uh, she typically sleeps in that kennel. Um, we did that a lot too because we wanted to to make life as boring as possible and, and that kind of goes back to how timid she was we wanted raider to want to get out and explore and have all this energy and that actually really worked that that was something that sergeant happened was like we need to keep her kenneled at all times the only time she gets out is for work um and we did that for quite a while and she started getting brave and was like you know i, I want to you know explore and be out of the kennel so it's something she earned kind of like you know she earned not being in the kennel at all times so um but yeah so her kennel and she has um gotten so much better now with being um sociable in, in those environments a lot of times she just sleeps she has a little bed upstairs um that she she sleeps on so uh, someone else asked they said they heard they want to know if it's true that if you see a, a police patrol car that's a canine car and it's parked and the horn is honking, it means that something went wrong with the car's system and you need to call 911 to potentially rescue the dog. Is that true? Yeah, that's actually very true. Um, a lot of our uh, vehicles are equipped with, especially mine, all of ours at Alpharetta. Um, hey, what did you find? She found a squirrel. Um, we have heat alarms in the car and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, here it is right here. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, pop hot it's called a hot and pop pro 
and it has the temperatures and everything on here. And basically, it's designed to uh, – there's two uh, thermometers in the vehicle, and it keeps track of the temperature. So uh, on a hot day, right, vehicles fail. And uh, if the AC stops working and uh, I'm in the police department finishing a report or, you know, I'm away from my car and I don't have radar with me, uh, it does a couple of things. Number one, it'll send me a text message on my cell phone. It'll also contact our dispatch center saying, hey, you need to let this officer know to go check on his dog. And then also what it does is if you don't get back to the car, I think it's set on like five minutes after it reaches its temperature it's set at. You know, I think ours is at like 83 or something. Um, if you don't get back in time, it'll roll down the back windows. Which I can wow. actually, wow. That's this incredible. Demonstration. So it'll roll down the windows like that. And then you see the fan in the window. Oh, wow, look at that. Take off the fan. Now it's on. I'm going to turn it off because it's probably loud. But both windows open, and what it does is it pulls air through to cool the car down. So that way the dog doesn't overheat. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, but it also uh, turns on the all the lights on the car, like if you were getting pulled over, uh, all the blue lights come on and the siren and the horn, they go on to, you know, grab attention. So yeah, if you see a canine police vehicle that has um, the horns going off and the lights on, just call 911 and say, hey, there's a canine vehicle. That's okay. a great, great yeah. just that yeah. one little bit of information gets out, I mean. Yeah, I had no <laughs> idea. It's, a, it's a great tip. There should be a commercial version of that product for dog the pet parents to, you know, aftermarket install in their own cars. Right. Although they shouldn't be leaving their dogs yeah, in the car. Yeah, they should be in the car anyways. <laughs> that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great system, and it's, it's saved a lot of uh, police dog lives. And I think you can buy it for your personal car if you want. I mean, it's not just something that um, it's just police-related, so it's just... Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us that. Do we got we got one more? Well, well, uh, yeah. Well, um, how often in, in a typical someone asks, how often does Raider have to do the the drug tracking? Like, how frequently does that come up? It just depends. You know, it depends on how proactive uh, our officers are, what we find. Um, you know, um, it can be daily. It can be every other day. Sometimes we may go for like five or six shifts without any kind of sniffs, you know. Um, you know, if somebody, if you can smell an illegal drug um, or you can see um, the drug, you know, we don't, the dog is used to establish probable cause, all right. So if you already have probable cause, we don't need the dog. So a lot of times our officers will see things, smell things, or people will just say, hey, you know what, I have something I shouldn't have in the car. And at that point, you don't need the dog. So it, it, it just depends on, on things like that. A lot of times we get mutual aid requests, too, from uh, jurisdictions next to us if their canine is off that day or not available. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it just varies. I, I don't really have a, a number. I mean, I've, I've had shifts where I've had, like, four or five canine deployments. And, you know, and our, our size of the department, too, that has a factor, too. You know, if you go out to, like, Los Angeles or somewhere – yeah, okay. no, it makes sense. Like we makes go to conferences where there's some handlers from really large cities, and and their dogs will have four or five apprehensions like a day, where wow. that's like wow. what one of our patrol dogs may have in a year, if that. So it's crazy. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, Officer Philip and Raider, thank get you it. guys so much. Uh, we truly appreciate you taking the time and chatting with us. For everybody watching. Um, check them out on Instagram if you haven't already. It's ADPS underscore canine underscore Raider for some awesome content, uh, really cool tips and stories uh, in this episode. So we really appreciate it. And uh, Officer Bill, have a good um, dog Father's Day on Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah, hopefully you guys have a good weekend. But thank you so much for, uh, for sharing this all with us today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Raider, can you say thank you? That's good. Hey, Marley, can you say thank you? 
No, she. I just got to make her wave like this. She's asleep for the whole thing. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a All good right. rest of your day and rest of your weekend. Everybody watching, we'll see you next week. Thank, thank you. you.